Our final reader for the night is Ethna McKiernan. Ethna is the author of three books of poems, the most recent of which is Sky Thick with Fireflies. Widely anthologized in collections as diverse as the Notre Dame Anthology of Irish American Poetry, 33 Minnesota Poets, and Beloved on This Earth, she has twice been awarded a Minnesota State's Art Board Fellowship. She is employed by a, she is employed by a Minneapolis nonprofit working with the long-term homeless population. Please welcome Ethna. Thanks to the St. Paul Public Library for hosting this. It's, it's really it's a beautiful space to read in. And to St. Paul Almanac and all those involved in it, um, community editors, Kimberly. I will be, if I, I have not yet found my pages, but I'll find them fast. And I'll read my two pieces in here and maybe one or two others. Um, okay. Could you tell us the pages? Sure, I will. I'd be glad to. <laughs> the first is page 265. I think it's the beginning of December. The quite unusual illustration accompanying it. The poem is called The Invitation, and it's the first sort of commission poem I've ever written in that a friend of mine's mom in her early 90s was dying in a nursing home, and Kathy came to me and she said, my mother asked me to stay overnight with her last night, and I I just I want you to write a poem about that. And I thought about it, and I did, and she died about two weeks later, and Kathy was really glad I had the poem. The Invitation, Shalom Nursing Home for Kathy. Tonight she asks you to sleep with her, both of you in the bed with side rails, a plastic mattress pad below. She is so happy to have found you, her daughter from the old house she loved and you are torn between her and the world of things you never finish, duty calling always. Between you is the tunnel back to childhood, where your 95-year-old mother is young again, wanting nothing now but to touch your cheek, stroke your hair, claim you as her own. And the other is earlier in the book, I think it's in the page 60s, page 62. And um, the title is from something my now grown boys used to characterize St. Paul with. We, would, we lived in Minneapolis. I grew up in St. Paul. And we would cross the Lake Street Bridge, and the kids would say, you know, I don't know, Mom, this place reminds me of bald-headed men in Sundays. So that's the title of the poem. Comments on St. Paul by my kids at 9 and 10 years old. My boys viewed their mid-1980 births in the old Midway Hospital on University between Porky's and Axeman as an embarrassment, a slight their St. Paul mom had designed to punish them by withholding the polished corridors of HCMC in their own hometown. It's just something when we cross the Lake Street Bridge that reminds us of church, makes us think of those bald guys, the old ones. It's not personal, mom. <laughs> Never having lived in that city of noble elms with doomed shoulders arced over Summit Avenue, or known the pine magic tang of Crosby Park at night on cross-country skis, or visited their mother's grand, frayed grand house on Osceola, they simply lacked fuel for comparison. Their domain was Minneapolis, the jazzy skate parks, glitz of holodazzle each December, Sunday forays into 8th and Hennepin for magic cars and chinders after church. That cherry in a giant spoon they longed to climb in Walker Sculpture Park. What did they know of meandering streets named not for numbers, but for places and for people? Of the majesty of that cathedral, the heady slopes of Ramsey Hill or West Side Cliffs, the white tinsel glitter of the winter carnival. How could they imagine the train yards off of Shepherd Road, where their mother in her youth ditched the railroad cops to hop a few freights west into California? When they'd forgotten their axe man treasures, home to everything you never know you couldn't live without, I quelled the urge to pull them backward to when they were young and ignorant 
of the rivalry between two cities, when snow fell deep and their requests each night were for more words from Peter Rabbit before sleep. And thank you. Um, this is a poem called Waiting Up, written when these boys were more 13, 14 year olds. They're late, a full half hour later than they said they'd be, and they're at it again. The run and ditch fireworks set off with friends at the park, which summon the cops blazing lights and draw the midnight ire of neighbors. Or else they'd miss the ride home from the movie and are now kissing girls in a dark alley, girls who boldly push their large breasts forward against my boy's skinny teenage chests. There's my father, 30 years back, waiting his heart out each weekend as we turned 15, turned 16, then 17, a flock of daughters turning and laughing, coming and going, leaving and coming back again so many hundreds of times while he slept at the kitchen table with his head on the book, one hand reaching outward in the pose of a man who is tired but wants to be ready. The lights dim, but the father present there, a force with whom we much must reckon. As I wake on the couch at this late hour when my sons return, will they know I've memorized the clock again, <laughs> have spun the threads of their imagined disasters to spool's end, that I've been waiting up for them again, my father's daughter yet. I'll close with a page of turn. Um, a short poem dedicated to a friend of mine who committed suicide um, 29 years ago this month. It's called Third Elegy, only because I have a poem about him in my first book and in my second book, and this is my third book. Um, I miss you, Stephen, even now, decades past the day you let the gun release its last retort into your head. Imagining your blonde hair white today, the flesh beneath your neck slack and jowly, your imagination slowed from manic to consider like a meteor on lithium. I would still prefer the fire absent from your eyes than your absence. Old companion, how the world diminished afterward in places where you walked and shook the 70s to dizzy bits along the Mississippi water flats and streets of Minneapolis. Tonight, this new and shaky century, shakier somehow without you, a bell is tolling wrong, wrong, wrong. Thank you all for coming out tonight.